Hi, I'm Angie Monko, and I am a conscious women leader uh, for women who want to break through overwhelm and into understanding themselves and achieving inner peace. A lot of us don't even know we're grieving, but that's the underlying work that I help them to do is to use energy technique, techniques to help them through that grieving process. Today I want to talk to you about remember who you are. And I also want to share a story of Christina Hines, who is a fellow bereaved mother and how she remembers who she is. And so what do I mean by remember who you are? I have three different definitions here. Um, to remember that we are spiritual beings having a physical experience and we forget our wisdom, we learn lessons and so forth. The second is that we are worthy and deserving beings no matter what appearances to the contrary. And third, we could call it, we come from a lineage of brave, worthy ancestors, like the Lion King used to say, remember who you are. So however you want to define, remember who you are, the key point is here, when life starts to feel really, really heavy and we get into a lot of self-doubt, to remember this, I am enough, I don't need to take my life so seriously and worry so much about all the ways that I fail or will fail. If I never accomplish, this is something I told my late daughter, Maddie, if I never accomplish one more thing for the rest of my life on this planet, it will be enough because I remember who I am. So let me start to share the story of Christina Hines who lost her daughter, Taylor. Her daughter was 22 years old and she committed suicide and same age as my daughter Maddie when she passed. Christina had been out of the country in Africa and it took her three days to get back to her daughter and she lived with tremendous guilt as a result of this which always makes grieving so much harder and it's been seven years now since Taylor's been gone. So it's been seven years now since Taylor's been gone and Christina's finally now starting to realize her essence and remember who she is. Uh, some key points that she learned along the way is that life is for the living and that there's still people here on earth that she can love and that she can connect with. It didn't end when Taylor died. She remembers herself at her strongest when she was always doing so much for the family as the matriarch and that mother archetype, trying to hold everything together, doing everything for everyone and, you know, sometimes sacrificing her own needs. Sound familiar? Um, she held her household together. You know, and the kids were starting to separate as they got older and became teens. But she also realized that there's a distortion when we lose someone very close to us, like a child, that we lose ourselves. But for Christina, what happened was at this time, the blinders began to fall and she began to see who she really was. So when Christina said the blinders finally fell, what she's saying is that she didn't have to create a whole new her after Taylor died. She just had to remember who she was, her true essence, um, that she realized that she can exist outside of other people, that she created the person she is, and she can, out, she can exist outside of their presence. She's not dependent upon them. Um, she's continued to grow and evolve despite what other people think. Um, she's continued to try to educate herself. And when we lose someone we love like that, it's a very common to lose a lot of relationships because people don't like to see us grieving and they can't handle the pain. It's just, it's uncomfortable for them. So they left her remembering her as that broken grieving mother. Um, but what happened is that she saved herself and she picked herself up as her own inner mother. So we all need to come home to ourselves. We really do, which is remembering who we are. And I've always known this intellectually. I needed to be loyal to myself and have my own back. But boy, putting it into practice is an entirely different story. Um, but I say to myself often now, I've got you. I love you. And that's if that's all you can say, that's okay. I wrote this little, I don't know, poem or whatever you want to call it, as if our hurting little inner child is speaking to us. And I invite you to look in the entire blog for the rest of it, but I'll start, here's how it starts. This is from our inner child to us. Be gentle with my heart and soul. I feel fragile and sensitive. I've been really hurt. Take care of me. I'm always doing for others, but now I need support and love and understanding. I need to know that you won't leave and reject me if I don't do as you want me to do. Continued on the poem. I don't want to have to earn your love and approval. Love me unconditionally. 
role model for me that you will stay by my side and have my back even if I'm not a good girl. You see, I've been taught that I'm not pretty enough, not lovable enough, and unworthy of your love, mom, dad, other authority, unless I perform. I'm smart and I see things that others don't see. And this doesn't make me bad or wrong. This doesn't mean that I should be gaslighted and meant to feel crazy. I've been handing over my power to everyone my entire life, expecting the perfect coach to fix me, to love me. I try really hard to not disappoint others so that they'll stay. My little girl just wants them to love me as I am. But I've been seeking solutions in the wrong area. I've been expecting them to rescue me from me. I haven't learned how to be here for myself. I've abandoned me. I defend myself to others when criticized because a part of me has always believed that I'm not enough and that I should be ashamed of my essence and my core and my beingness. So see the, the notes for the rest of this poem, but we need a heart of gold and a stomach and nervous system of steel to help us to remember who we are so that we don't have to be so defensive of ourselves. When we know who we are, we do not have to defend. So by creating this environment of being loyal to ourselves first, then we can reap the following benefits deep closeness and connection to source, creator, ourselves, and others. Allow our love and light to shine through and have the biggest impact with others. Know our enoughness, our worthiness and lovability, even if we never do one more thing the rest of our life. And finally, trust ourselves as the authority of our own life. I'm here to support you. So please go to harmonyharbor.com and check out the contact page. Reach out to me. Let's have a chat, a free discussion, no pressure at all. I just want to support you in being the conscious woman leader that I know you're meant to be. Thank you.